Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today, here with the great and wonderful special guest, Mrs. Oracle. Hello. And there we go, she does talk, <laughs> folks. So, special edition of today's video, we are going to be talking about Mrs. Oracle's flipped classroom right now. As you all know, maybe you guys will pull up this video up in the future, doing historical research about the times of crisis that we're living in right now with the covid Anyway, she's teaching here, and it looks like a swanky room here, but this is actually the garage set for the Mrs. Oracle put together, with a little help from me, but very little help. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that out front, out of the gate. We um, cleared out about four linear feet of crafting goodness. Yeah, so the studio here, with the nice things that you see around us, is only about four and a half feet wide. <laughs> If you go too far in either direction, you're going to find the usual garage junk. So, welcome to Video Magic. So, even if you don't think you got a lot of space in your house to put together a little video casting suite, uh, a space to work, especially if you educators out there that need to do this stuff every day, uh, potentially, make yourself a little space someplace that you don't have to set up, spend 15, 20 minutes setting up every time. Uh, Ms. Oracle can shoot out here. Uh, what's it take you to get going? Well, anymore I have to turn the heat on for. Well, yeah, it is cold <laughs> here. It, it's cold here in here in but Ohio. Literally but I literally yes. turn on my computer and start start taping. Yeah, so um, a couple little neat tricks. She's got marks on her table here where she needs to put her PC so that her webcam's lined up and all that kind of thing. The lighting is already set up. Having that little studio ready to go ahead of time is going to make it um, a lot less stressful for you. And then you can go back and do what you actually need to be doing, which is hopefully providing some educational content to America's children. And we totally MacGyvered everything in here. My oh, yes. My desk is a folding table, and it was wiggling a bit uh, when, I, when I would write. So Mr. Oracle here, he's, <laughs> he's got it braced with duct tape and dowels that he found in the garage. Yes. And my uh, webcam, we made that with an old, I, I dare say an ancient webcam my document camera we made it out of an ancient webcam that is clipped with a bulldog clip to a um, embroidery hoop and held down by a big rock it so. doesn't get much <laughs> more low tech than that um yeah that, that actually this is one reason the video quality is a little low it's not just youtube down downstream in our video right now she's actually got my webcam hooked up on that that uh, that embroidery hoop. So we're using the laptop's <laughs> integral webcam right I'm now. I'm really proud of that document camera. It, it's actually. a very nice document. Cam <laughs> so yeah, that embroidery hoop is pretty cool, but it's got my webcam, so <laughs> can't do anything with it. All right, so so that's the setup for the room. Uh, are you using a, a, a fancy mic or anything like that? No, actually, I had some of your discarded mics, and I tried those out, and I couldn't. My uneducated ears, I couldn't tell a difference between those and just the integrated microphone on my computer so i just use the integrated mic so that's an important thing to remember a lot of podcasters if you go research and doing podcasting or something like that on on the internet they're going to tell you about these hundred dollar mics or these fifty dollar mics or three hundred dollar mics uh uh mrs oracle i almost call you mo i like that i'm do she's mo mo here has just using the integral mic on her ThinkPad. Now, her ThinkPad has a much better mic than what's in mine. But even in my ThinkPad. But even so, you could use the microphone in your earbuds for your iPhones or your, your smartphone or whatever. Uh, I've got a Bluetooth headset, uh, athletic headset, that works really nice, actually, for, for, for microphones. So you might already have microphones that are perfectly suitable for delivering classroom content. Uh, I would also suggest um, that you don't need to go overboard. You don't need to have a 30-minute video because, well, research suggests... Six minutes and then kids turn it off. The woman knows what she's talking about. She's researching for a doctorate. <laughs> Seriously, smaller videos. And I can say on my YouTube channel that goes for your average Linux user too. They tend to like the shorter videos. Um, uh, six, seven minutes, I get you know good response on, good playtime yeah. on. Even so, my longer videos, you can see six minutes, there's just a drop-off. Yeah, okay, so... And those are interesting videos. They're about math. Obviously, it's interesting if it's about math. So, let's go into the software that you're using in in, in your flipped classroom. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is, a, nominally speaking, a Linux channel. 
we normally talk about Linux software. However, you're not using Linux full time right, right now. You're using Windows, which is yeah. fine. I, I'm casting no aspersions on America's educators. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But you do use a lot of open source software. I do. Yes. yes. So we got a lot of open source software coming in, and the first one uh, that you use is what? Well, when I start making the videos, I usually start with OBS Studio, and I I cannot say enough great things about that. Originally, this isn't my first experience with a flipped classroom. I had a flipped classroom a couple of years ago, but I made my videos in my classroom. And I used, um, I think it was called Screencast-O-Matic, which was something that our district had and it was connected to our smart boards. And I find OBS Studio so much more intuitive to use than that. Um, it, it works with my flow yeah. better. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you say it's more, um, more. Uh, what, what feature uh, of OBS do you like? Now, we, 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 you've already talked about a little bit about your document cam. Mm -hmm. How are you com combining that with your video? Yeah, so it's very easy to put different video feeds in OBS Studio. Right now, I usually have myself as a little picture. Like we are now. Picture up here. Yeah, and then I have my document cam where I write whatever problems we're working on. I have that nice and big taking up a little more than half the screen. I can also put up... A, um, a screencast if I need to. I have a little extra open space there where I, where I could have the, um, the website with the textbook or problems going on there okay. or show students how to put the equation in on Desmos or how to put the table in on Desmos. So, so you've heard a lot of stuff there, but Macy, what it is is OBS lets you use multiple sources. So MO here has got, I kind of like that. I'm going to start calling you MO all the time. MO here has, has, has her document camera tied in, the face cam tied mm -hmm. in, a picture cam tied in. She could put in her screen if she wanted to share her screen. Um, all that combined inside the one software, and it, and it saves it between sessions, right? So right. you don't have to set it up every time. Right. So again, get it set up the first time. Tweak it as you go a little bit. But keep it set up using these tools, and it'll save you a lot of time in the long run having to deal with it. Come out here. Just remember to put on pants when you do a screen when you do a, a online video cast. You don't have to. <laughs> He's not wearing pants now. That is a lie. <laughs> they might have holes in them, but I am wearing pants. Okay, so you've got your video now. You've got your document presentation. Mm -hmm. What are you doing after that? Well, best case scenario, I nailed it, and it is a perfect, wonderful video, and I think that has happened to me once. That since we is started shocking. Doing I don't think yes. that's ever happened for me. <laughs> I think it was a very short two-minute video. Yes. I managed to, to get it right the first time. Um, but usually it needs some editing. Usually I have to splice a couple of things out, and I do that through Caden Live. Now, Caden Live is a great window video editor. Um, it's probably, out, uh, among the open source video editors in the Linux world, you, you, you mostly got Caden Live and you got OpenShot. Caden Live is, is my favorite. I started using it a long time ago. Naturally, uh, Ms. Oracle has kind of adopted it because that's what I recommended to her. But the, what a lot of people don't realize about things like Caden Live, which is a part of the KDE desktop project in the Linux world, is all this software we're talking about, including Caden Live, will run on Windows. This is the actual software that MO is using, so uh, keep that in mind. But basically, this this Caden Live is just a, a, a video editor. You can put multiple clips on a timeline. Mm -hmm. You can cut and splice them and chop them up and mm -hmm. beef up the audio a little bit if it's too loud or, or too low. It, it has a lot of things that the average person can use right out of the box. I use it for all my videos on the channel. Um, it has some stuff for more complicated users. Uh, don't be scared of the gazillion features that it has. Uh, I've used like six features. But it's very uh, easy. I think it's called the razor tool and you just take out your mistakes and you can rearrange yeah. things. And I usually end up talking a lot longer than I think I'm going to. And I think I'm going to have that six minute video. And when I'm done with it, I've talked for 30 minutes and I can chop that up into different videos. Multiple sections. Yeah. yeah. So Kane Live, great choice for a video editor. Okay, so we are going to go to document creation now. And we've got we're going to show three open source tools for creating documents. This would be on your end as a teacher, and possibly on your students' end as well. The first one is one that we <laughs> that uh, this is Oracle discovered yesterday, yesterday yeah. and that is Inkscape. Yes, so I needed to make an infographic, and the way we 
generally work in the household is I say, hey, what you got open source that will do this? <laughs> and he names off a couple of things. And uh, so that's how I became aware of Inkscape. And I've tried to use some different software before to help make graphics, to help make things like this. And I am not good at it. I I did have to call you in because I couldn't toggle between stars and polygons on this. And yeah, that said, was probably you. You just, finally said, "Have you tried clicking on it?" Yeah, that and was that was a little. So that's that's the that technology level that I'm at. That sometimes it's like I don't think to click on things, but within just a couple hours, I had um, an infographic that I was pleased with, and that I felt confident sharing with my colleagues. And this is definitely something I'm going to be using when I need to generate um, maybe guided notes for my students. Usually I do that on Google Docs or LibreOffice, LibreWriter, but I'm going to be using this more and more. So this is a, a professional vector graphics editor. Uh, it's That's kind of geek speak. I'm, I'm not going to worry about what kind it is. It's very analogous. If you want to take it into the paid software world, it's analogous a little bit to Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and in terms of that, it, it does mess with vector graphics. If you're a graphics artist, don't 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 throw things at me. I'm not a graphics artist, okay? Uh, my my brother is, and he would probably tell me everything I said that was wrong. Just know that sh it was a really nice interface. It was easy to use. It had a bunch of pre-built shapes and gradient colors and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff that were built into it to help the average person actually generate a pretty professional looking document i thought by the time it was done i know i've gotten handouts at trade shows that looked a lot worse than what you produced yesterday so that was pretty pretty uh, snazzy Excellent. i thought and there's a lot of templates available on the internet about with that i actually what i ended up doing i found a template i liked i didn't end up using it but i followed the tutorial that came with whoever was blogging and made that template and that taught me a lot about so there the you go functions. there's templates then and you I go off on, on your own, own. yeah uh, you can't ask for more than that uh, another one for your kids who might be, have been transitioning themselves to distance learning unexpectedly is LibreOffice. Now, LibreOffice is a great choice if you need an offline office suite and you can't pay for Microsoft Office, or if you don't if you don't have a steady internet connection, Google Docs might not be a, a good option for. It. I know a lot of schools, our school uses Google Docs, so they all have Google Word processors. And Microsoft Online is available to my son's uh, college uh, uh, on their accounts. But LibreOffice is offline. It's the old classic Office suite, spreadsheet, word processor. It is 99.9% .9 compatible with, probably 99.99% .99 compatible right now with Microsoft Office formats. I got zero problem uploading these things to Google Docs for turning in applications. Mm -hmm. The open document format is supported by most of the online classroom uh, applications that schools are using for management of the homework, things like Schoology and uh, Blackboard and Canvas and things like that. So this is a great tool. If you need it to be offline, LibreOffice is the way to go. You don't have to pay for Microsoft Office, and you don't have to use some piece of junk. LibreOffice is pretty first class, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, um, yes. So I, it is, however, boring Office software. So it is. It's it's a word processor. It's a spreadsheet. Uh, it's a few other odds and ends. There's a little drawing application. Uh, but if you've used a word processor. You know what LibreOffice is, or spreadsheet. You know what LibreOffice is. It just happens to not be Microsoft. Right. Incidentally, Microsoft also supports the open document formats that are championed by the Document Foundation. So you know you're not going to lose compatibility if you go back to school and go back to your old to your old stuff. All right, and one more that neither of us have used, but I've seen in the in the in the interwebs here is Scribus, and it's an open source desktop publishing. I've fired this up once or twice before in the past. I've never really kept it, but it reminds me a lot of Microsoft Publisher. I don't know how good um, Scribus really is, but it might be something that if Inkscape's a little too um, esoteric for you, you might be more more familiar with the kind of work you can do with Scribus. It's very similar to those old. Uh, like Page Maker on the Mac side or, right, right. or or Microsoft Publisher. So check that out. I'm going to have links to all the software here in the, in the show notes at the bottom. Again, all the software runs on Windows that we're covering, Windows and Linux. Um, so you can you can you can get that stuff on whatever operating system you happen to be running. Because I don't care what operating system you're running, because you're out there educating America's kids, and you know, yay. So that's the software we're going to show today. 
there's all kinds more of open source software out there, but the Flip Classroom. The great experiment. Going the great on. experiment, yeah. right? Now, we are using things like Zoom in our school district mm -hmm. uh, for, for the online meeting component. Uh, you know, Zoom's having their security issues. I honestly choose to believe that they're just having growing pains and that they're going to take care of stuff as it goes forward. They seem to be responsive. Um, let's see how they play out. I'm not going to throw any stones at people who are really, really helping out our school district. So um, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so Zoom was one. They're also using things like Schoology and, and for, doc, for homework management. So Google Docs. Google Docs, yeah. of course, uh, is popular in the school system. And, and, of course, there's always the Microsoft Online components as well, as long as you have net access. Now, the one other thing I will mention to you guys out there, and that is if you don't, if your kids don't have Internet access, a lot of school districts are opening up, they're keeping their Wi-Fi on at the schools. So if you can borrow a laptop or something and get out to the school, uh, maybe you can turn in your homework and get your assignments and stuff out there in the school parking lot. Uh, it's not optimal. I, it sucks, and I and I hate it that you're going to have to do that. But I know our school district has set that up, mm -hmm. and um, um, I've been tempted to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, 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 it, it's great for the kids to be able to get up there because even our libraries are closed right now. So the ha the having that resource available is good, and also a lot of school districts are doing the Chromebook checkouts yes. and the iPad checkouts mm -hmm. and things like that. So check that out in your school district. Also, kids, be kind. To your textbooks and your equipment because the school district's going to need it back at some point. I thought you were going to say be kind to your teachers because they're experimenting with uh, Be kind this. to them too. At least they're a little <laughs> insulated from you now with internet space. We okay. still worry about you though. Yeah. yeah. At any rate, for all you open source educators out there, thank you. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at form.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. And Mrs. Oracle. Oh! Have a great day.